Hi, I'm Max Spainauer. And I'm Troy McCormick. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Welcome back to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. This afternoon we're at the Glendale State Fish and Wildlife area and we're going to be doing an interesting project with Bob White Quail. Bud, can you tell me just a little bit about what your position is and what we're going to be doing today? Yep, I'm Bud Vivarka, I'm the farmland game research biologist for uh, Indiana Department of Natural Resources. And um, we're doing a project on Bob White Quail here in Davies County where we are putting radio collars on quail to track their daily movements. Um, we're tracking females to nesting during the summer. We're tracking them throughout their brooding period. Um, we also got males collared. And we'll be able to track the movements whether they're on the property or off the property. Um, this is one of the collars that we're, kinda, we're using this year. And uh, it is a small medallion collar. Uh, it is a, referred to as a transmitter because it transmits a signal. Um, this actually goes over the neck and forms kind of a necklace. So it truly is like a collar. Yes, it is truly a collar. It goes right over the head like this. Okay. Um, and this antenna, uh, about eight inches, uh, transmits signals about a half a mile. Um, in, in good weather, we can get that. Uh, sometimes with rain, with vegetation, it's limited. Um, so uh, typically, I'll have a person who will use a uh, receiver and uh, that will receive the signal that this puts off and will attract the birds every day. Now, uh, radio trackers and transmitters on wildlife is nothing new, but this is the first time I've heard of it being used on bobwhite quail. Is this a study that's been done in Indiana before, or is this something new for the state? Um, we've done some radio calling before uh, when we've done some uh, relocation of birds. Uh, I believe back in the mid-90s they did some relocation, and, and they wanted to track some of their birds at that point. Um, we haven't ever done uh, actual nesting and uh, brood rearing study um, and part of the emphasis of this study also is disturbance. Um, our, the, our area here, Glendale Fish and Wildlife Area, gets a lot of um, use not only by hunters but recreators. So, so how, many, how many birds have been trapped and collared with radio uh, transmitters already this year? Uh, so far this year we've got 13 birds, we've got 8 males, 5 females. Um, today we've got an additional 2 females and males uh, to uh, collar. Well why don't we go ahead and get some birds out and let's get some collars on them. Okay. We've got a female here and uh, she looks in pretty good shape. A um, little bit of panting. Typically when they, they get panting that's a little bit of a stress indicator. Um, so we'll get her worked up pretty quickly um, and uh, uh, my assistant Matt Carney here will uh, check her over for any injuries. He'll check the wings. Um, he'll check her legs. Make sure there's no broken bones. And then um, you know, check to make sure she, her reflexes are fine. Uh, you know, she's blinking her eyes fine. She doesn't seem lethargic. Um, so she seems in good condition to put a radio collar on. The bands are marked with our telephone number at the Bloomington field office. So that if they're recovered by a hunter or other recreators in the, on the property, um, they can let us know that they've got it. Um, we take a, each band, it goes on the leg. And um, for federal, some federal studies, they want a certain leg um, here. These bands aren't federal bands. These aren't a migratory bird. So uh, it doesn't really matter what leg, just mo one of most convenience um, that we put the band on. And we make sure it's nice and tight and uh, not overlapping so that there's any kind of exposure of uh, an edge to cut the leg of the bird. And then once it's on, we give it a quick rotation to make sure it slides all the way around the bird. Okay. And obviously the antenna doesn't impede the flight or anything? No, an antenna is very flexible. Um, typical, as, as the bird works through the field, it'll bend down and, and, and eventually just lay kind of along the back. Um, once we put it on too, we'll kind of lay it down behind her. Um, we'll just slide the collar over her head and get down behind the back of her skull. Um, and then we actually will cinch it up here. And uh, 
Got to slide and put up on here. It's a small crimp that we'll use. Put over the, on the bird. And then um, and we'll go ahead and use a pair, a small little pair of new nose pliers here. And just crimp that down and, and that holds nice and nice and tight on that bird. Okay. Once the collar's in place, um, we'll trim any excess cable off. Um, we don't want to have any of this shiny silver cable showing uh, because that'll help to attract any predators. And so once that collar is in place, um, he'll fluff the feathers up around that collar, kind of let, lay down nice against the chest. Pulling those feathers up around too allows us a little more room for around the crop um, when that bird's feeding. What's that? It's uh, 150602. Is that the frequency of the transmitter? That it is. Yeah. And, you know, That'll obviously be important when you go to try and track her later. Yeah, and then of course we'll we'll throw that signal real quick on our our receiver here. Now I know that we've already tested these before yep. we put them on. Obviously, this is our secondary test before we're going to release her into the field. Yeah. Now that we've 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 put the collar on, we always want to double check to make sure that uh, the signal we have written down also is also the same one that's on her and that it's working and it is a um, it's a what we consider a 30 pulse per minute so about every two seconds that that beep goes um, if that if she were to die and that collar sits still for eight hours then at that point um, we'll get a double beep um, and then that'll let us know that that collar is either has come off the bird or she has been killed by either a predator exposure something has you know has caused mortality and then we'll be able to go in examine the area uh, and determine a, a cause of mortality and you can adjust our, our receiver here um, and you see uh, we have it on we have a dial here and uh, each of these changes the uh, frequency along here and I can adjust it to different frequencies so right now we're set at 602 which is what she is and uh, that way we're not picking up the other, other callers if I were to turn one of those it'd probably pick it up right now too last year we didn't lose any birds during the season until the radio started to fail late in the year what is the battery like battery life? Um, the current ones we have uh, should last till somewhere about mid-september to late September um, we're getting a new set of, uh, of collars, and those will last um, well over, uh, well into November. So we'll be able to this year, with some of our newer collars, be able to track some of these birds all the way to the start of the season. Hey, well that's it for today at uh, Glendale Fish and Wildlife Area Radio Collaring Bob White Quail. Special thanks to uh, Bud and to Matt for uh, uh, sharing the experience with us. And uh, we'll have to check in with Bud later in the season to uh, find out how his test results come out from monitoring the quail. Join us again next week right here on Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Mm -hmm.